Welcome back. And here we have the Gizmondo. It's a system that was designed in Europe to compete with uh, Sony PSP and Nintendo DS. It had very advanced capabilities like uh, 3D graphics acceleration, uh, an optional GPS uh, navigation system. Uh, it supported a SIM card that you could use to send uh, SMS messages. Uh, also, you could buy it in two versions. You would get the Smart Ads version, uh, which was cheaper, and uh, it would send you ads into your games. Or you could buy the more expensive system, uh, which came without the advertisements. It had a range of games such as Sticky Balls, Pocket Ping Pong, and then Fat Hammer Classics from the Finnish uh, mobile developer Fat Hammer. However, uh, very few people have actually owned one, and here's Jukka to tell us more about it. Well, it's Mondo, it's a funny thing. I, can, I think we can describe it best by calling it the biggest fraud ever in gaming history. Basically, the whole thing was a cover-up for money laundering, for mafia, mafia stuff, for crime, to, uh, to shit, just simple shit money out of people and companies. The people behind Gizmondo, well, they started by buying a, a factory in the United States that built mattresses. That company was was in the stock market just barely, but it had a good name. So suddenly, this company making mattresses changed its policy to make GBS systems for family, for keeping children safe. And then they noticed that the child GPS system isn't isn't profitable enough. So they decided to make a nice gaming console and. Uh, then it started to go really funny. Let's say simply a lot of strange stuff happened, but the owners of the company, they had whole bunch of companies linked to each other, moving strange, huge sums of money from each other. And usually, uh, and usually this money ended to one of the owners of the company. They whitewashed money by moving it round, round, round through through many, many hands. But the funny thing is they actually did publish this machine. And uh, how, how it managed, how, how did they manage to publish a machine when uh, everything they were going to do was just money laundering? I don't know. There were some people who actually did work but then most of the people of Gizmondo, well, they were driving in their Ferraris. They had huge launch parties where Sting was playing with eight, yeah, Sting was playing with 800,000 pounds check. The, the launch party was full of paid celebrities and uh, practically no people from the street. Nobody, nobody was really interested in Gizmondo. They sold within three first months in the British market. They sold 5,000 consoles with the expenses of, uh, I don't know, 30 to 50 million pounds. The funny thing is also they managed to get more and more money to their operation and then they circled the money, they recycled the money and hit them to nice banking accounts. It's the biggest fraud of the gaming history and we are still waiting for the actual final details. Nobody has told what really happened yet. Only the press has been trying to find out details. But I'm sure there is still much, much to uncover. But thanks to the Swedish Mafia, we have a nice fail.